Hello chess lovers, I have another mind-blowing game for you. With a white piece is playing the magician from Riga and his opponent is John Ripley. The game was played in 1974 in Liverpool. This was a chess simul and Mikhail Tal started with e4, c5 by Ripley, Sicilian defense, knight f3, d6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, knight c6, bishop g5, e6, queen d2, Tal goes for Richter, Rouser attack, a very sharp line. A6, now white castles queen side, bishop d7, f3, both strengthening the pawn on e4 square and also preparing g4, bishop e7, and here we go, h4, rook c8, g4. These soldiers are now marching forward in order to kill the enemy king, queen c7. Well, actually, b5 is better and then bring the knight on c4 square, but black is playing queen c7. Bishop e3, freeing the g5 square for the pawn. Knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, e5, bishop e3, and bishop c6. Actually, placing the bishop on e6 square is better, this looks more natural, a very typical position for the bishop in neither variation, but after bishop e3 we see bishop c6, here comes g5, and after kicking away the knight, the h pawn is marching forward this time. b5, black is trying to counterattack on the queen side, bishop h3, connecting the rooks, pinning the knight and at the same time preparing g6, b4, knight d5, bishop takes d5, e takes d5, rook b8 and the g pawn is reaching his enemies, look at this, f takes g6, h takes g6, h6, black is trying to keep the king side closed but the light squares are weakened too much and white will start to exploit those weaknesses. Right now black can go for some b3 moves, let's white tal is playing king b1 moving away the king from c file and of course this is a very important prophylactic move when you are castling queen side. a5, the a pawn is coming to support the b pawn and here we go f4, this time trying to open up the center of the board, bishop f6 and rook f1. Actually instead of playing rook f1 tal could capture on d7 and then capture on e5 and only then rook f1, but instead after bishop f6 we see rook f1. The difference is that now after rook f1 black can play e4 trying to keep the center closed. If bishop f5 then black can sacrifice this pawn and play a4 trying to organize a dangerous attack. But after rook f1 black played rook f8. Here comes bishop e6, knight b6, f takes e5 and knight c4, actually this is the best move for black. But let's have a look at the other lines as well, what if instead of playing knight c4, black will play bishop takes e5, then white can capture on f8, if king takes f8 then rook f1 check, now if bishop f6 then bishop takes h6 can be very dangerous, and if a move like king e8 then simply rook f7, this is just crushing. Let's go back, or after f takes e5, if a move like d takes e5, then this is a very beautiful line which I would like to share with you. Then white can play d6, if queen c6, then bishop takes h6. Now if g takes h6, then rook takes f6 is very powerful. If rook takes f6, then the g pawn is marching forward. And if rook g6, then the engine just offers a crazy move. Can you find the best move for white? Ready? This is just a mind-blowing move, queen takes h6 is actually winning on the spot. Luring away the rook, if rook takes h6 then white can promote the pawn to a rook, let's promote to a rook and this is a checkmate. Let's go back but after f takes e5 we see knight c4. And now you can pause the video and try to find Mikhail Tal's next moves. Ready? As you can see the queen on d2 square is hanging, but Mikhail Tal played a fantastic move, he captured on f6, 
allowing black to capture on d2 with a check. Knight takes d2 check, bishop takes d2. And now this powerful pawns supported by the bishop and the other pieces are going to become a real headache for black. Rook b7. Well, if a move like rook takes f6, then simply rook takes f6, and then bishop takes h6, and the g pawn is unstoppable. If rook c8, simply bishop f5, protecting the pawn on c2, and it's over. Let's go back, but after bishop takes d2, we see rook b7. But of course, that queen's sacrifice is not enough. We are going to see another firework on the board. Bishop takes h6. What a move! Black accepted the sacrifice and captured on h6. Well, if a move like rook takes f6, then after the exchange of rooks, the g pawn is marching forward. Black should give up the queen, and this is an endgame where white has an extra piece and it's over, white is winning. Or after bishop takes h6, if g takes f6, then bishop takes f8, and then white can capture on f6, and then play rook f7, the queen is under attack, and the pawn is also coming. Let's go back, but after bishop takes h6, we see g takes h6 in the game. g7. Look at these powerful passed pawns. This is just magnificent. In order to get these powerful passed pawns, Mikhail Tal sacrificed a queen, a piece, and now we see this piece of art on the board. Queen c4, and white captures on f8, promoting the pawn to a queen. King takes f8, rook g1, with a deadly threat, rook g8, checkmate. Rook f7, but now Tal is playing rook g4, opening up this g1 square for the rook with a tempo by attacking black queen, and black resigned. Now if queen c5, then rook g1 is winning, threatening rook g8 checkmate, and black should give up his queen, and this is winning. Or if rook takes f6, then black king can even get checkmated after these mighty checks. What a game! And of course, understanding that the position is hopeless after rook g4, John Ripley resigned. Just one word, guys. This was amazing. I'm not managing to find words to describe the beauty which we saw on the board. Mikhail Tal was a true magician. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave your comments. Good luck.